Good morning and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Clinton Griffiths. Today we're in Oklahoma City for 4-H Day at the Capitol. But first, we'd like to continue with our series on artificial insemination. Now we will warn you that we are a demonstrational show and today we're breeding cattle. So, for those of you who are having breakfast or just aren't comfortable with this much cow that early in the morning, take seven minutes and join us back here. For the rest of you, enjoy the show. Well, we've taken a look at our cow herd and watched for estrus to find out if they're ready to be bred. We've talked about tank and handling the semen in the tank. Dan, why don't we go ahead and start uh, with what do we do once we get it out? Okay, probably, uh, probably the most important thing is making sure we have the correct thaw temperature. I think that's some, uh, something that people forget. Uh, with uh, very simple, you can, doesn't have to be elaborate on a thaw, you can do something as, as simple as a thermos. Uh -huh. and, and a thermometer, or they do have uh, these units that are, are 12 volt or 110 that have a thermostat that will, that's automatically set. And so they're full of water, so when you pull that straw out, you want to drop it in there and let yes. it warm up. And the, how long are we talking about? Well, the critical thing is time and temperature. The universal thought temperature is 95 and uh, for about 30 to 45 seconds. Okay, so not a long amount of time. Not a long period of time. Now, if you have a, say you've got a set of uh, animals that you've synchronized and, and you, you're gonna have uh, uh, breeding uh, multiples, I guess one right after the other, uh, recommendation is to put no more semen uh, in the thaw unit that you can breed in a 15 minute time period. The thing we have to be uh, concerned about is what we call cold shock mm. to that semen. It's just, just a drastic change in temperature yeah. and it'll affect the um, membrane around the, the sperm cell and it'll be detrimental to the, to the sperm. So uh, what we try to avoid is what we call cold shock. Yeah. So once we get it thawed out, uh, what's the next step? While this uh, unit of semen is uh, thawing, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a paper towel. Again, it was pretty chilly last night and uh, we're gonna warm this gun up so again, we won't experience sh cold shock right. uh, to that semen. High temperature can be a problem also. Uh, a lot of people do uh, breed in the fall, uh, mm -hmm. usually around November, December. It can be pretty chilly and I know if you're out, uh, I've seen this happen quite a bit, is they're out breeding out of the back of their pickup and they throw the gun up on the dash to pick up on the heater to warm up and that's you can be too be, hot too hot you know again you're going into the into that cow you need to be body temperature as close as you can okay. with, without any extreme changes in in temperature great what we must remember is uh, water is very toxic to uh, to the sperm cell so it needs to be completely dry completely when it comes dry out. we can either use a what's called a straw cutter mm -hmm. or a pair of scissors and that just opens the top that opens the top up we're going to place this into this snap that in we're going to draw our plunger back on our gun we place this in and again we're going to twist that on again make sure that we're just going to bump up to that cotton plug that's in there. We're going to wrap that unit or the gun with a paper towel. And again, as we go to the chute to breed the cow, again, temperature's uh, a concern. So I'm gonna place that straw under my arm and we're gonna try to keep it warm as, as we go to the cow. So All right, well, I guess we're ready to go breed a cow. Let's. Uh, Grab a glove and the lube and we'll head that direction then. All so. right, sounds good. All right. All right, so well she's waiting on us. Yeah, let me get let me get a little bit of lube. It's very important that you use some type of lubrication. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we're gonna go in rectally on the cow. One of the main things we need to make sure of is that that cow is cleaned off behind. And again, I like to I like to take a clean paper towel again and just we're gonna go in the bowl, we're gonna go in rectally. And 
And what are you doing rectally there? What are you I'm feeling, feeling for, for the I'm feeling for a structure called the cervix, and uh, we're going to manipulate. Again, we're going to deposit the semen uh, just past the cervix in the uterine body. We we try to be as clean as we can. I'm going to put a little pressure on the base here as I go in the vulva. I'm going to go in about a 30 degree angle because uh, if I'm pointing downward, I might uh, hit the urethral opening. Okay. And the cow will let you know if you <laughs> hit that. So that seems like you're working your way in there. I'm, again, I'm trying to, I've located the cervix. Uh, the thing to remember is I am not pushing the gun through the cervix. I'm manipulating the cervix over the gun. Okay. That way I'm not pushing and prodding and uh, you're not going to forcing, your, forcing way. your way in. I can. You can tell when you're there then? Tell when I'm there and I'm just going to deposit the semen slowly. Let it just kind of dribble over the front of the cervix into the uterine body and and that's that. Well, that seems uh, seems pretty cut and dry. Is there anything that people need to be watch out for while they're doing this part of it, or tips? Uh, for? Cleanliness. Uh, again, you are uh, you are moving through into the uterine body. So uh, again, the cervix is that structure that separates the the outside from the inside. So right. anything that you take in on the tip of your gun is is going into. Uh, you know, into the uterine body. I've, I've heard uh, some guys talk about, uh, you know, breeding really young cows, and a lot of times they'll try to clamp down on uh, your arm as you're working in there, or uh, any tips on, on trying to manipulate that? Uh, again, I'm, when you go in the cow, I try to just go in with my, my fingers kind of closed like that, and just, again, that cow's gonna try to force you out, but uh, just let her work over your hand and just, Again, don't don't force your way in. Go just slow. steady pressure will will get you there. So you just real nice and gentle and work your way through it. Manipulation. Again, they are the cervix has structures as that closes down called cervical rings. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, I was trying to you're going to manipulate uh, the gun or the rod. Uh, you have to maneuver through those yeah. those rings. Is so it left and right or up and down? It's all directions. All directions. All okay. Directions. So okay. you may make a left hand turn and back to right hand, or so it's uh, it it varies, and that's why the manipulation of that that cervix is over the gun, not pushing your not pushing gun through. through. Okay. So, well, hopefully in a couple hundred days we'll see a calf here. We'll see. So. All right. Well, thanks very much for the explanation and the demonstration. And I appreciate hopefully it. Hopefully that's so, good information for everyone. All right. Hope so. Of course, watching Dan do this work is not the same as getting hands-on training. There are a lot of different schools around the state where one can learn the proper tools and techniques to do their own artificial insemination. And as always, we recommend you get a quality education before you go and try this on your own.